Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 100 of the J Situation podcast. I'm recording this on February 8th, 2022. We did it. 100 episodes. That's not normal. <laughs> you know, when I started this podcast, I thought I was going to interview a bunch of silencer people, you know, and I, I was going to interview my lifting buddies and have them on, maybe some engineers, just, you know, some of my friends. We would talk about stuff, talk about gun stuff, talk about life, talk about lifting weights, you know, maybe just, just talk about general stuff with cool people, with like-minded people, you know, and throughout the journey of the podcast, I sort of ended up using it to keep everyone up to date with Pew Science, right? You know, the, um, uh, you know, the, the pandemic hit and routine started to be a little different, you know, and frankly, I, I kind of enjoy putting out these episodes for you guys, like I'm doing it. And every day, I get feedback from listeners. I do. It's really cool. It could be, you know, people that are new to silencers or or military guys or firearms nerds. It could be manufacturers or people in the gun industry that don't even really deal with silencers that much. You know, and but but the point is, there are a lot of you listening. And the feedback I get it's pretty positive overall. And since I love doing it and people find it entertaining and informative, I think I'm going to keep doing it. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. And I thought about doing something special for the hundredth episode, you know, and I, nothing really came to mind. It it, it didn't. I, I think the reason this is going to be like any other episode is that I try to make each episode stand on its own. I do, and I want each one to be a historical record of the journey and continue along the path we've set, you know, together. That's really my intent. But I'll I'll tell you this much. (laughs) Um, If you asked me two years ago what I would be speaking about on the 100th episode of the podcast, there is no way. I would have said, oh, an OSS silencer. <laughs> like s- Some of you have talked about this among yourselves, and I've spoken about it too. Um, the OSS stuff is one of the biggest surprises that came out of this work. You know, it, it showcases the power of the suppression rating. It does. The power of Pew Science, the power of the whole effort, true loudness. You know, true loudness characterized not by subjectivity, but by inner ear response. You know, by hearing damage risk. What hurts your ears more? You know, th- that's what the suppression rating helps you determine. That's what that is. And, it, you know, there's, it just is a fundamental concept. And the OSS stuff does better than we all thought in certain situations. So yeah, like in 100 episodes, maybe it's fitting that this episode features a technical discussion about one of those silencers. You know, so perhaps the episode will be special after all. <laughs> you know, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, it's just, it's interesting. It's interesting, you know, wh- where we've we've come in this. And... You know, and regardless of your interest in, you know, that particular subject matter, you know, for this episode, I did want to take, I did want to take the opportunity to thank some people specifically. Um, I wanted to thank them for the support they've given me, you know, as I progressed through the effort. It's It's been a while. And I actually, I, I sat down before this and I... I prepared some words to say about a few people, specifically, like I was going to mention them by name. You know, I, I did, I, I did this the other day. I, I sat down and I wrote, I wrote a lot of stuff down. Um, but then I slept on it, and unfortunately, I have decided not to mention them publicly. Uh, and and the reason 
the reason I'm not able to actually publicly thank the people who have been instrumental in the development and success of Pew Science is because of the silencer in the firearms industry itself. Um, un unfortunately, it it's not in my best interest, in your best interest, or in Pew Science's best interest to thank people anymore, really. And 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 this is the environment the silencer industry has created. The industry does eat itself. It does. It it, it it's systemic. Now that being said. I don't want I I don't want to turn this into something negative because this episode should frankly be a a, a wondrous positive episode. It's a hundred hundred episodes. It's a big milestone. Okay, so I don't want to um you know spoil spoil the the bunch here um, with a, with one bad apple. Um and you know that being said, Pew Science would not be where it is today most likely without the guidance and support and the goodwill and the cheering on of several honest and good people behind the scenes. I mean, those people I wanted to thank, they're real people. And and and, and I'm here to tell you, this effort would not be the same without them. Despite all the bad stuff, there are diamonds in the rough. There are. And oftentimes, you know, these diamonds, they come from other places. Maybe they don't come from within the industry. Maybe they've come from other places and they go against the grain. You know, and some of the people I wanted to thank, they're definitely like that. And some of the people I wanted to thank, they're just plain good people. And that's become increasingly rare. You know, not only in this industry, but in many areas of life. I think you'll see that it, you know, just plain good people, it's... Sometimes it's harder to find them, and that's just that's just how it is. So uh, I made the decision to keep those people behind the scenes. They're gonna they're gonna stay there. I'm not gonna mention them by name, and that's that's to protect them. That's to protect Pew Science. And so if you're if you're listening to this and and you're one of those people, thank you. You know who you are. You do. And if you have to wonder if you're one of those people, I. I you're not. You're probably not one of those people if you have to think about it. <laughs> okay. You know, that's not I mean, that's not meant to be rude or mean or anything. That's just, yeah, that's how it is. So there's only three or four people really that that I'm talking about. It's a close group. So, um, you know, as this Pew Science effort continues and as, as this podcast continues with the next hundred episodes... The cadence is probably going to shift a little bit. Um, OPSEC is definitely going to increase. Um, Defense is in general going to be become more solidified, more fortified. Uh, so, you know, make no mistake, the effort is not welcome by the industry at large. And so um, that's just something you need to know. And that's just that's just how it is. Uh, you know, it. <laughs> it's like, what is that saying? Uh you know the you know it's like that because that's how it is. <laughs> no, but it is. Um, it, it's just not. And so, one thing to always always remember, though, in spite of that, or despite that, this effort is for the people, and it's by the people, and the industry can do nothing to take it away from the people, ever. I designed it like this. I created this to to ensure that it is impenetrable it is not vulnerable so so we're gonna we're gonna make sure that that stays like that and we're, we're gonna keep going and this is the hundredth episode <laughs> of the podcast and and it's and it's gonna there's gonna be a hundred more and there's then there's gonna be another hundred more it's gonna keep going okay so I don't want you to be sad. I don't, I don't want you to be depressed about that. I, I was, you know, it was funny because I had when I had initially prepared some talking points for this episode. I was looking forward to an extremely positive introduction, and I was going to humbly thank a bunch of people by name, and I, I 
called an audible at the last minute. <laughs> I was just like, dude, no, I can't do this. And I actually, I even, I, I, I phoned a friend. Like I, I consulted with third parties. Uh, just to, just to, sometimes when I'm trying to decide something and I have a really strong gut feel, I, I reach out to some other people just to kind of get their, like, you know, their advice and they, they advised against it too. They were like, yeah, don't, it's not worth it. I was like, okay, I, I thought, I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, let let it be known that the silence, the silencer industry itself is the reason, unfortunately. Okay, That's, so I mean, I don't want there to be any mystery. I mean, I, I wanted to thank people by name. This is a hundredth episode. This is something I do every week for people. This takes a lot, large portion of my life. Honestly, it, it's it's a huge effort. I don't know many people that will speak into a microphone for between an hour and two hours every week with no editing, in one shot to the world about a research effort and can and continue that for 100 100 episodes. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm a superhero here, but I'm also saying if you think it's easy, <laughs> try it. <laughs> you know. So, I it is what it is and there are some people that I can thank publicly. I think, and that I want to, because I, I was, I was wanting this to be a celebration of some truly, I guess, some people with beautiful souls, some great people that are good on the inside, you know, because you, you see a lot of people that you think are good on the outside, but you know, it's like a Snickers bar. Snickers bar is pretty good. You just look at it, you know it's going to be good. But then you, when you bite into it, you're like, oh my God, what is this? Is this heaven in a candy bar? And yeah, it basically is. Snickers are good on the outside and on the inside. But you know, some people, they're not like Snickers bars. You bite into them and they're rotten inside. To the core. Worms come out spoiled black inside it's like when you bite into an apple and it's rotten inside there's a lot of people like that too and the people i wanted to thank they aren't like that they're all snickers bars so <laughs> yeah, that, i swear these analogies are going to get away from me but but you know what i'm saying i i try to be friends with snickers snickers bars by and large um i think it's uh not only is it a good candy bar but you know it's just good in general, and and I think that there are a lot of people out there like that. And if you can surround yourself with those types of people, I think you'll go far. You know, and and you know they they'll set a good example for you. You'll set a good example for them, and you'll you'll feed off uh, the positivity and the integrity of the people. And you know, at the end of the day, what do you have as a man or a woman? What do you have as a human being? Your integrity. No one can take that from you. Okay, it's all. It, it's in you. It's inherent to your. It's inherent to your being. So surround surround yourself with people that share good integrity and good trait. It's hard to. It's hard to. You, you can't manufacture it. You can't acquire it. You have to have it. Some people never will. But the people you surround yourself with should. It's good for you. Okay? So, the people that I, I can thank publicly without endangering this entire effort that we have <laughs> we've set, we, we, we've set in motion to, to help everybody, the people I can thank are obviously all of the consumers, the dealers, the distributors, the manufacturers, all those members of Pew Science, the, 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 the folks that put their money where their mouth is and support the effort. With, with They pay a monthly membership fee on the website. They all deserve thanks publicly. Yeah. 
obviously, and not only them, and I not only them, the, the manufacturer R&D clients at Pew Science, the people that contract with us for testing, with us, with me, the people that contract with me for testing. So I can help them understand their products better. You know, they pay for professional services. They deserve thanks too. They're supporting the effort like any patron of any business. So that's cool. And it goes without saying. I think thanking all the, these people publicly goes without saying. I, I thank you all each and every episode. I do every time. Every time. You, and if, you, if you're new to the podcast, if this is the first time you're listening, first of all, welcome. Because this is the 100th episode. So strap in because it's going to get long. <laughs> Second of all, um, go back and listen. If you think I'm blowing your skirt up, I'm not. I, I'll Every episode, I thank these people, and I do it from the bottom of my heart. I do it sincerely. Everything I say is sincere. Well, sometimes I joke around, but mostly when I'm being serious, I'm being serious. You know what I mean? So I don't want to, you know, I, I was going to I was gonna go off on a long kind of a sappy th- thank you train with all the the people close to me that I really wanted to thank, and I couldn't do it. So, you know, I don't want I don't want to forget all these folks, the folks that I can thank publicly. I think it's important to thank people. I think it's important to know not only in life, it's not it's important to know your limitations, but it's also important to know where you came from and it's important to know who helps you get there. You know, to to where you to to where you sit now, to where you sit when when you when you succeed at something, you don't do it by yourself. You know, you may think you do, but that's ah, there's always some kind of support system for a human being. In rare cases, I guess you do it all by yourself, but uh, there's usually some help. And you know, you you can't you can't forget people. It's important. We're we're not a alone society. You know, humans aren't meant to be alone. We're not meant to operate alone. We're we're a tribal society. We have culture. You know, you can, you're not by yourself. So nothing's in a vacuum. Nothing's on its own. So today, when I'm speaking about all the stuff I'm going to speak about, technically, and we're going to have some fun, we're going to talk about talk about silencers and stuff. Um, you know, focus on the people I didn't mention. Just know that they're there. Focus on the people I am mentioning. You know, the people that support this publicly, and and as I do the next 100 episodes. You know, some of these public supporters, they might not be there. Maybe they drop out. Maybe new ones come. Maybe they don't. But those people I didn't mention, they'll be there behind the scenes always. Um, I wouldn't be even be talking about them if I didn't think that. They're going to they're gonna be there through thick and thin, through the good and bad. You know, and, and, and even if they disappeared tomorrow, their contributions to Pew Science and the entire and thus <laughs> thusly thusly i always like to use the word thus but it's already always hard to cram it in their contributions to pew science and thus the entire state of practice for silencers in general will echo through eternity it will okay so th- again, if you're listening, guys, thanks. I mean it, and you know who you are. The J Situation Podcast is probably sponsored by Silencer Shop. It is the most efficient and intelligent way to purchase silencers probably right now yeah, uh, for consumers at large uh, during this eForm 4 thing, probably. Uh, so far, I think Silencer Shop's doing a good job. They're doing it to the ATF satisfaction. I think they've they've shown that um, from the beginning. Actually, that they the, the the rules that the ATF outlined were clear. Sponsor shop followed the rules. I created a solution that that so far seems to be seems to be satisfying ATF the, the ATF proclivities. Um, uh, but, and it's all one can hope for, frankly. And and the ATF does seem to still be the bottleneck here, uh, as we all did expect. Uh, it is the current best case scenario pra- uh, from a practical standpoint. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that's the reason Sponsor Shop continues to grow. I think that they 
continue to innovate even in, i mean what did atf do they made this e-form system the way they wanted it to work what did sponsor shop do to help <laughs> look what they did look what they had to do <laughs> is it perfect well that's it's a pretty good method so yeah use their kiosk do your fingerprints on it put your photos in there electronically it's encrypted error rates low yeah Simplifies your silencer purchasing process. Money back guarantee. It's great. No transfer fees. No paperwork errors. Just you and your silencer with no drama. It truly is silencer ownership simplified. How's that for an ad on the 100th episode? Did you think that Silencer Shop would sponsor a podcast in which I speak autistically into a microphone for hours? going on and on about gas dynamics of silencers and the hearing risk to the operator and bystanders. <laughs> it's, it's, the absurdity of it all is palpable. Secondly, however, the J Situation podcast is also sponsored by the True Shot Gun Club out of Arizona. And when I say they're, it's sponsored by them, it's not exactly sponsored by them, but they do support it in a way. For example, in the show notes, you will see there is a link. <laughs> it takes you to, to, to their site. If you buy ammo, after you click on that link, it helps the podcast and it helps Pew Science. That's how that works, okay? It's, it's very simple. Um, now, if you want to join their club and you, you get free shipping on all your ammo you buy from them and stuff, you can use the code word Pew Science at checkout and you get 20 20 dollars off the that membership fee for their it's basically like the amazon prime of ammo yeah you win they win you help the podcast simple okay okay all right again i've talked to talked about it for the past couple of episodes but i tried to do something that could help you guys and help help me okay i figured it was win-win i don't know let me know no let me know how you like it all right okay and lastly the reason why this podcast uh, goes on uh, the way it does um, it, with the cadence that it maintains and with the updates and content that it has is because of Pew Science. Okay? The, the J Situation podcast, the podcast that I run, is also spurred on and developed by and supported by my company that I run, Pew Science. It is pushing the silencer industry forward one test at a time, okay? It is. And you should, if you have not, go to pewscience.com for the suppression rating. It is the simplest and is the most accurate hearing safe rating for your suppressed small arms, okay? It's based on true human sound perception of the entire gunshot from before combustion all the way until the combustion is gone through complete blowdown. Okay, it's in section five on the website of the Silencer Sound Standard. The standard is a set of articles. It is a conglomeration. It is a rubric, a method that I created to walk you through gunshot noise. And it's sort of like Wikipedia, but it's more entertaining, I hope. Okay, there's seven parts. They're all on PewScience.com for you to read. You don't even have to read the whole thing. It's fine. If you go there, though, and you're not familiar with any of it, skip to Section 5. That's the suppression rating. It's going to let you know how silencers stack up comparisons to one another with regard to sound at the muzzle and at the shooter's ear. It's going to give you a hearing safe dose limit for the particular platforms on which the silencers are tested, okay? Directly tied to human perception. More specifically, directly tied to hearing damage risk. If the rating is higher, it sounds better and your hearing risk is lower. If the number's lower, it's going to probably not sound as good and you stand a, a bigger chance of hurting your ears. Okay, that's physically what the, the, the rating is. Now, the sixth section of the standard contains very detailed reviews. Okay, those are called sound signature reviews. If they're too detailed, that's fine. Skip to section seven, otherwise known as rankings. Okay, this is a simple database tool. It's going to let you sort and view the suppression ratings of all the publicly released test data, and there's links to the individual reviews in the database. You can go wild. Okay, okay. Now, with regard to one of the 
parties that I think publicly earlier, if you are a manufacturer of silencers and you would like to use Pew Science for private testing and consulting services, there is a form on the website. You know, you can submit that inquiry to me. You do that, and all your contact information, the the, the body of communication that you submit through that, that form system, it goes directly to me and me only. It is kept confidential. It is held in strict confidence in perpetuity. Unless, of course, you decide after our contractual obligations are fulfilled that you would like to release the data to the public, in which case I would be happy to publish an article with the research for the website for the world to see. It's up to you. It's not my rodeo. Okay, it's your rodeo. Pew Science is happy to help you with that. Okay. Finally, you can support this podcast. This is 100 episodes, guys. This is the 100th episode. You can support me doing this for you. You can support Pew Science. You can support all the testing I do, all the research I do, all the the in, invest, investigatory efforts that I do for silencers by joining with a membership at PewScience.com. You can. You can even donate. One-time donation if you like. Many times you can do whatever you want there. You can donate a little bit. You can donate a lot of bit. You can donate nothing. Right, every little bit helps, though. And if you have no money at all, which, frankly, could be true, uh, something that doesn't cost you anything, uh, you can rate the podcast. Uh, good on your favorite podcast provider, iTunes. You can rate it on Spotify now. Yeah, you just go ahead and let folks know that sponsors and guns are awesome. Slowly but surely, we can normalize the use of suppressed small arms. I think we can. So. You know, in 100 episodes, I got a lot of feedback and reviews from folks, and some good, some bad, but by and large, mostly constructive, and I appreciate that. So it helps me. It helps me help you better. That is the goal of what I do, helping people. I think 100 episodes, you'll you'll notice that that's pretty much the theme of what I'm trying to do. So I do have three topics for you in that theme to, 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 to help you. In, in particular, so I will talk about those now. Topic one, Sound Signature Review 664. The OSS HXQD 556K. On the Mark 18. Yeah, it's AR-15, short barrel, 10.3 inch, yeah. Technical discussion, I called it the OSS. It's, they got a new name called Huxworks. I I can't help but say OSS. It's just, it's in the vernacular. It's in the commonality. It's uh, it's going to be an adjustment for all of us. You are not alone in your in your adjustment timeline, time frame. Okay. Topic two, stacked data publications, guys. I just got to do them. Um, I might publish some member research too. I want to talk about that if we get to it. This is I know topic one is going to be long, so we'll see if we get to topic two. Topic three, speaking of topics we might not get to, topic three, who cares about science or diameter anyway? Seen, I've seen some murmurings about this in the industry lately. Who cares about silencer or diameter? I don't know. It's actually a question. I'm asking you. Do you care? <laughs> also, well, of course, I'd be remiss if I did not welcome the new Pew Science members. Thank you for your support. Okay, we're going to move into topic one at a time of 28 minutes and 48 seconds. Okay, well, that's got to be a record for the intro. Well, you know, sometimes I talk, I do some ads. This time I talk to you for a while. In fact, you could probably consider the introduction a topic in and of itself. Okay, just got some water. <clears throat> so we're going to move into topic one. Sound Signature Review 664. That's right, the latest publications came out last week. Uh, PewScience.com. The OSS HXQD 556K with 556 in the Mark 18. Technical discussion. I actually, this is one of my favorite things to do is go over the technical data and analysis with you guys here. You know, I kind of walked through the article. So I, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and go to pewscience.com and go to the reviews. I'm going to click on the latest one. I'm actually in the member section. So I clicked on the member review here. I'm going to have this up um, to look at uh, as, as we go through it. Did I just, oh my gosh, I, I always like accidentally accidentally like click on my audio program i'm so scared i'm gonna mess it up 
It's like, he should hire a producer. I really should. I might do that someday. But right now, I'm really focused on this. So, like I said in the intro, excuse me. Like I said in the intro, if you asked me two years ago if I would be speaking about this silencer in the way I am speaking about it now, like any of the OSS silencers, really, I would probably say, nah, probably not. (laughs) I don't believe you. (laughs) No, in fact, I'm fairly certain that if you go back into some of the old episodes, my skepticism of the OSS designs are pretty palpable, if not blatant. I probably said some some specific things. I probably called them out specifically. I'm, if I didn't, I, I I probably meant them when I was talking about them. You know, you 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 have to really excuse me. You have to really really understand silencers to come to grip with what OSS has done. And I don't mean I don't mean that as some kind of weird gatekeeping statement, you know, or some holier than thou enlightened understanding like enlightened understanding of silencers. Like that's not what I'm saying. I mean, you really need to you need to really understand what a silencer is doing and how the ear interprets it. Okay? You do. And Pew Science members spe- specifically, this is a throwback for you. It is, you know, go check out member research supplement 642 from last May. I want you to if you're a member and you haven't seen that, you, I implore you, research supplement 642 from last May. It's important. If you forgot what the HXQD 762 does to your ears compared with the, the Sam NS, the Hyperion K, the, the 762 RC2 on a bolt gun, you need to go, you need to go look at that article again. This is not a public article. This is a P, this is a member article. It's a member research supplement. Sometimes I put these out for members. They're valuable because, um, well, I mean, all the articles on PewScience.com you can't get anywhere else in the world, but these you def these are like hot these are another level. And sometimes they're extremely well, they should be extremely useful to you. Um that article in particular is very useful for understanding silencer behavior and for examining pure signature. Isolating variables, it's a 308 bolt gun, guys. 30 caliber silencers on a 308 bolt gun. Bolt, bolt gum, bolt gun. The, it's pure suppression, pure signature, and it's extremely useful for you to understand how the silencer works. And we, we saw something extremely interesting in that OSS signature data. You, and this is this is public knowledge. Many people remark that the OSS silencers can sound boomy, quote unquote, boomy. Okay, and we have analysis showing that the subjective impression of boomy has meaning and it's directly tied to the silencer signature okay so like i said members go check out supplement 642 6.42 okay it's going to help you here i think it's going to help you here all right i do now so where are we now you know you've seen oss data you've seen the data and analysis on supersonic three-way bolt action in review 641, you saw that, yeah? Then the members saw the in-depth research supplement supplement 642 that I just talked about, yeah? So you saw that. It's more information. Then you saw the same silencer with subsonic 300 blackout in 645, you saw. Okay, just keep going. Then again... You saw uh, another full-size OSS sensor, this time the dedicated 556 model on the Mark 18 in review 654. That's 10 reviews ago. You saw the first that you saw the OSS, the full size, the HXQD 556 full size on the Mark 18 is 654. So you've seen that. So you've seen a lot of stuff on OSS. You, you, you know a lot about the technology now. You know a lot about how you really need to have a lot of pressure to see the high dividends with the performance. Okay. You know, you, you know, <laughs> I, I think that I can say this, you know, due to the Pew Science Omega metric that the silencers let gas out very quickly. And when I say the silencers, I mean the OSS silencers. 
Okay, and what is that? That's consistent with low back pressure. The data in the Mark 18 test confirmed it too. I mean, you've seen, you saw the OSS HXQD556. You saw how it absolutely dominates performance so far at the ear on the Mark 18. It does. I'm not mincing words here, guys. It dominates it. How? How does it how does it dominate in, in lowering hearing damage risk on the Mark 18 compared to all the other silencers? How? How is it able to do that? Is it just low back pressure? Is it just a low P science omega metric? Or does it also have to suppress the muzzle? Yeah, I mean, the answer, you know, spoiler alert, <laughs> the answer, it has to do both. You know, the, the Mark 18 is what it is, guys. Standard host, 070 gas port, carbine length gas system, 10.3 inch barrel, H2 buffer, carbine spring, mil spec buffer. Well, H2 buffer, but it's mil, it, it, it's a mil spec buffer and carrier. It's, it's not a special H2. It's just it's the it's the proper mass, proper size, mil spec carrier. You know, and I I, I tune a lot of my guns. I do, and and chances are some of you do too. You know, but you know who doesn't? You know who doesn't tune their guns? Most people who have ARs. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> okay, how many people have ARs? A bunch. God bless them. Okay? God bless them. A, a bunch of people have ARs. And almost all of them don't tune them. Okay? So, that's what we got. But, you know, with, with the full-size HXQD 5.56 in review uh, 654 10, 10 articles ago, we got a silencer that flowed so fast. It flowed so fast that the ejection port signature's contribution to the total signature was so low that it's the current pack leader in the published data. And it did that with a muscle signature that while it's not the best, it's respectable. And it didn't in significantly increase the at-ear signature. Boomy? Yes, the silencer's boomy. Is it the quietest? Absolutely not. <laughs> but that silencer was quieter than a rugged razor. A little quieter on par with the trash panda. Is a little quieter than the KGM R556. So yeah, I mean, when it comes to hearing risk, that 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 full size OSS silencer did pretty good. Okay, especially on an untuned host. Especially. Okay, so what now? What now? What about when you make it shorter? The HXQD 556K. This is the subject of this topic, the, the review 664. You chop off almost an inch. I, got, I think I have the data right now. I had a, had a typo in the review when I first published it. Because, you know, I had to give the silencer back. Um, I had borrowed it from, from somebody to test it. I borrowed it from a dealer, test it. And I took a picture of it and everything. And I had the data and I... Went to go write the article and I, I misplaced my notes where I had written down the the the, the, the physical parameters, and so I it, it's um so so I believe the the correct length is five point nine inches. Uh, a, Pew, a gracious Pew Science member actually measured his for me with calipers and showed me the picture. So with a full size HXQD five five six, you go from six and three quarter inches, six point seven five inches down to five point nine inches. You're almost chopping off an inch, almost. So what happens when you do that? What happens when you, what happens when you get an, almost an inch shorter, on the same design? What happens? And that that's review six sixty four. Okay, let's talk about it. That's that's what I'm doing. So pewscience.com, you can follow along at home. It's uh, per per usual. Okay, go check out Sound Signature Review six sixty four, the sixty fourth publication, episode one hundred, publication sixty four. I like these numbers. Yeah, I really like the number four. It's one of my favorite numbers. Yeah, you, you double it, you get eight, and then you square it, you get 64. It's an omen. <laughs> I don't know. It might be. Um, bottom line up front, 
26.2 composite suppression rating on the Mark 18, 21.8 at the muzzle, 23.4 at the ear. Not super quiet, no, 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 but not super loud for the gun, as you've seen. And the silencer is not super big, yeah. In fact, it's 5.9 inches long, like I said, but that's to the flash hider features. That's actually important. It's shorter than the RC2. It's shorter than the Saker. Okay, it's compact. It's a, it's a good. It's good. You, if you want, you know, and if you want to see, and I looked at, I wrote this down because I wanted to make sure. Um, if you want to see a photo of the silencer next to a bunch of other ones, if you go to my Instagram, or 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 the the Facebook, the book of the face, on either account, the the J situation or Pew Science LLC. It, it, Facebook or Instagram, either account on on May nineteenth of last year, May nineteenth of twenty twenty one, I posted the photo, so you can see the size compared with the other silencers. That that may help you understand how big or not big the silencer is. Okay, if you want to go back go back and look at that photograph. Now, I want all as always. I, I want to move through the review, and um, the, it should actually be pretty quick theoretically. <laughs> well, we're only forty one minutes in. I've I'll get some water. Only 41 minutes in, why not? Yeah. Should be pretty quick. Yeah, because, you know, you've already heard me speak about the OSS behavior so much. We're just going to show you what we already know about the silencer. It's not going to be hard. And and if you haven't heard me speak about OSS, well, strap in. Because we're going to do it. Yeah. So, go to the review. You, you can, we already talked about the, the bottom line up front, the suppression rating graphic. This bottom line for sound, signature. It is the industry standard. Guys, by the way, this is the industry standard for, for sound signature now. It is. Yeah, just, just let it be known. Scroll down all the way down. Uh, then there's going to be a table, table one with like peak pressure and impulse. Just skip that. It's not going to help you. Okay. Now, I want you to scroll down all the way to figure one. Now, figure 1A and figure 1B. What do we have here? What are we looking at? Fingerprints. That's right. We're looking at fingerprints. Who has their hand in the cookie jar? Whose fingerprints <laughs> are we lifting off of this jar right now? Okay. Double thumb loop. Clear as day. Super easy to see. OSS by a mile. By two miles, actually. By two miles. <laughs> you can tell it's an OSS signature by the way it is, dude. Look how fast the blowdown occurs in figure 1A. Look at it. Look how fast the blowdown occurs. So wild. So fast. Man, that get that gas gets out of there fast. It gets out of there even faster than the from the full size HXQD556. Why? Why does it get out even faster than the full size? Shorter. Gas pads are even shorter. Okay, that's figure one A. Look at figure one B. What's figure one B? What is it? Early time. It's just the early time. Figure one B, look at it. If you flip back, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm gonna. I'm going. Okay, I'm gonna paste that. Meow, meow. I'm gonna open up a new tab here. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove a point. All right, one second. Okay. <laughs> so what I've done is I I have a tab open with the current review I'm talking about, review six sixty four, and I have another tab open with the ten reviews ago of the full size version of the sensor six fifty four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down in my window here to figure 1A and 1B of both, so I can flip back and forth like a lunatic. Now, it's fine. A little a little bit on the spectrum is fine. You, you, you uh, It's not, not a problem. Um, trust me. Now, where was I? Oh, right. Go back to 654 if you're at your computer or your phone or however you're viewing these the, the, this information. Go to figure 1B in 654. You see it? The blue and the the blue and the black. The blue and the black. Shot one is shot two. Black is shot one. Blue is shot two. The blue and the black. You see that in figure 1B? 
back in the in the full size review you see it got it don't even have to look at the numbers just look at it you see that you see what it looks like cool now flip back to 654 what do you see super similar time super similar what are the immediate differences what's different I mean, they, 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 have the, they almost have the exact same wave shape, first of all. Why? Oh, it says fingerprint. That's why. What's the difference, though? The difference. What's the difference? If there's a difference, what is it? In figure 1B, between the full size and the case answer, what's the difference? If there is one, what is it? It's gross amplitude. A little bit of timing, too. A little bit of rise. A little bit of rise. A little bit of rise time difference. Just a flow rate difference. <laughs> What's that? Why is that omega metric? Yeah, a little gross amplitude and time is a little different, but fingerprints are largely similar. It's definitely from the same animal. You know that. So that's really it. Gross amplitude and timing is really it. That's really the only difference. Why? Why? It's because the silencers are extremely similar. And one's just a truncated version. Yeah, that's why. This, and I, I'm actually, this is so serendipitous that this is the hundredth episode this this right here is reason it's reason 174,329 why you know the data is real frankly silencer fingerprints undeniable can't fake it this this is oss behavior and you absolutely can't hide it we'll know pewsoft will show it Every time, every time. Huge positive face pressure. Why? Why? All the pressure is getting out fast. Why? High flow rate. That's why. High flow rate. How do we know? We know weapon behavior, pressure wave shape, positive phase duration, and bump, 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 bump. Figure two as well. That's right. Scroll down to figure two. Impulse space. Look at it. Figure 2A, figure 2B, smooth, steep, fast, consistent, OSS. That's what that is. It's, again, it's just, it's more of the same. Go back, go back to the full-size review in 654 again. Click back. How did I know to do that? We prepped ourselves. We have two tabs open. We're crazy. Boom. 654, go back. Scroll down. Figure 2, smooth. Smooth curves. Yeah. They're smooth. I mean, they, they're they super fast. More first-round difference in 654, sure. I mean, if you look in the 654, you can see that the black curve is more, more difference in that one than the others. Why is that? Why 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 is that? Why is the black curve in, uh, in figure 2A and 2B of review 654 further away from the other curves um, than it is in the smaller silencer uh, data in 664? Why is that? You know why. The bigger sensor contains more air before the first shot, doesn't it? More impulse from FRP. So there's, there's a bigger there's a bigger FRP impulse difference. All other things equal. That's why it's bigger. That's why the gap's bigger. You go back to 664. Gap's not as big. There's still a gap because there's still FRP. You can never hide it. You can never hide FRP. You can't. It's combustion. You, it, it's impossible to hide. But sometimes uh, some animals are more equal than others, and uh, <laughs> there is more. Now, boy, howdy, are these curves still smooth in, the, in Review 60, 654. In the case silencer, it, you, again, you see some extra combustion in shot one particular. If you look in figure 2B, I did zoom in so you can really see what I'm talking about. You do see... The extra combustion right from the jump, right from the jump um, uh, with shot one. You can see it. There is air in the silencer that will um, facilitate extra combustion taking place. But the curves are still smooth. Look how smooth, how consistent. The flow consistency, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. The flow is smooth, consistent, repeatable. From shot to shot, you get what you get. That's important for silencer sound. It is. We know this. We know this. We, we're noticing patterns. We see it. Okay? It's fast gas. It's quick flow. It's OSS in a nutshell. This is picture. This is text. And, and it's weird to even say textbook, but we, we've we written it now. This is the textbook, frankly. And this is textbook OSS. 
This is textbook high flow rate. We've defined it. We've created the textbook. Episode 100, review 664, science or textbook, textbook OSS. Section 6.64 in the science or sound standard, the science or textbook, OSS is shown again, fitting its behavior pedigree through the entire standard, the entire test, across weapon systems, across cartridges, across flow regimes. Consistency. Okay? The flow rate's so fast. It's so fast. You're flowing faster than silencers with overbore for the cartridge. That's how fast you're flowing. You're, you're flowing faster than the Rugged Razor on the Mark 18. You're flowing faster than the Q Trash Panda, my friends. You're actually you're flowing a lot faster than the Q Trash Panda. The back pressure from the from the HXQD 556K and the Q Trash Panda, it's not the same sport. But I, I thought the I thought the Trash Panda had a lot of volume. The, the, the internet told me that a lot of volume makes the silencer have low back pressure. No, wrong. Wrong. You're wrong. No soup for you. Back pressure is tied to mass flow rate, not volume. Forget. Stop saying it. It's not true. Now, there's a lot of stuff in this review. But before I go on, <laughs> did I, was I just super aggressive in telling no soup for you, like the soup Nazi on <laughs> Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> no, I. It's true though. So get it out of your head. Now, now, our large volume. Do, do some large volume silencers have less back pressure? Well, yeah, but not because their volume's big. It's because their flow rate's higher. Come on, man, you guys. You guys, enough with, with the with the craziness. Now, again, like I was gonna say, there's a lot of stuff in this review. But before we go on, can we just? I want to show you something, and I. this is a nuance I've talked about a couple times, and I've definitely talked about it in the articles, but I want to talk about it again, because this is the 100th episode, and frankly, we're almost an hour in, and this is important, and if you're going to listen to any episode, I hope you listen to this one. Uh, tell your friends. Now, do you have a moment to look at figure 1A? Again, scroll back up. It's the one with the orange in it can't miss it figure 1a okay i want you to look at figure 1a and i want you to look at how long it takes the bolt to close after each shot on the mark 18 with the silencer okay look at it it's right there i'm going to click on it and make it bigger so i can look at it a lot along right a big this big monitor right in front of me i'm looking at it just like you looking at it right now 95 milliseconds you see that on the horizontal axis so where you see some perturbations occur in pressure space in late time. That's what we call late time. I know it's only 95 milliseconds, and a lot of people think that's a very short amount of time, but when the gunshot, it's very it's a long time after time, after 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 the combustion. Now, the trigger time approximately in this test, approximately was roughly 30 milliseconds, not exactly 30 milliseconds, but approximately 30 milliseconds. So since you can do math. It took what? Uh, about about 65 milliseconds after the main pressure pulse first came out of the silencer for the bolt to come back. I mean, we're me this is all from one sensor, right? So it's reasonable to assume that the time scale is constant and <laughs> roughly that. I mean, yeah, the, they're they're technically at different distances from the sensor, but. For all intents and purposes, it, eh, it's roughly 65 milliseconds after the main pressure spike. Uh, the, the the bolt comes back into battery. Chambers a new round out of the magazine. Yeah, Six, 65 milliseconds, roughly. Don't 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 think about that as perfect, but roughly 65 milliseconds. Okay, okay. It's pretty slow. H how do I know? It's slow. Well, I looked at it this before. I looked at some of this data, and I, I I remember. You can, and if you don't remember, you can go go look at the Seiko review from Science Co. Go look at the Science Co. Seiko review on the Mark 18 on PewScience.com. It's review 653. Go look at that. Go look at the same figure, figure 1A. Look at well, look at what time the bolt closes. Remember, in this OSS review, it closes around 95 milliseconds. 
In the Seika review, <laughs> it closed around at 75, 75 milliseconds. It closed, it closed with the Saker. When it tested the Saker on the same weapon with the same ammunition, the Saker had the bolt closing on each of the first five shots of the test because it doesn't close in the sixth shot, remember, because the, the bolt locks back on the empty magazine. I shoot six shots for a reason. Every test of the Saker and the Mark 18, the first five shots, the bolt closed 20 milliseconds faster than they did with the OSS. What's that? What's what's 20, 20 over 65? Because so remember, the OSS closed, took it, it took the OSS 65 milliseconds to, to, um, after the main pressure spike to to close the bolt, right? And it took the it took the Saker twenty it, the Saker did it twenty milliseconds faster. So it's twenty over sixty five. That's thirty one percent. Thirty one percent. Does that does that mean that you have over thirty percent slower? bolt speed on the mark 18 with 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 the oss silencer than you do the saker does that mean your bolt speed is 30 percent slower with the oss silencer than the saker in other words you're you know you're well no no it doesn't (laughs) it actually doesn't mean that because the, the this is total return time so you you actually don't know how fast the bolt came back on the initial stroke from the waveforms, you don't know that. You actually don't know that. Um, you just know how fast it came all the way back to closing after the entire shot. That's all you know. Okay, you actually don't know the the the, the opening speed. You just know the final return stroke. Okay, so what you know from the data shown is that the weapon, the Mark 18, completes the whole cycle over 31% slower with the HXQD 556K than with the Saker on the same gun. No tuning, just changing the silencer, okay? And that's the Saker with the direct thread mount. What if you had a more restrictive mount? Uh, would that make maybe the bolt speed go up even faster? Probably. So this is an extreme example, right? Okay, because the, the Saker is a very high pressure silencer, High, high, I'm sorry, high back pressure silencer. And the HXQD 556K is a very low back pressure silencer. Okay, but you see this a 30%, a 30% increase in uh, total system re- reciprocation time uh, with, with the Saker than over the OSS. I mean, you're going fast, you're going 30% faster to complete a cycle in the reciprocating system is that is that will that Im- impact the the weapon dynamics and the and and parts wear more well i mean i don't know ask the weapon uh, ask eugene stoner well he's dead so you can't ask him ask the people that 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 uses design go talk to i don't know talk to nice armament <laughs> talk to um other people that engineer parts of the AR platform. I mean, you, oh, I guess you could talk to AR builders too, the, pe- the, the people who, who put ARs together, armors, whatever. Forget, but go talk to the designers. The designers are who you should be speaking to. I mean, I, I, I mean, I have nothing against people that assemble ARs. I mean, they're, it's like, but that's like you go to a mechanic to talk about your car. It's like, yeah, mechanic, mechanics know a lot about cars. Just like, Armors know a lot about ARs, <laughs> but mechanics don't design the cars, just like armors don't design the rifles. So, um, if, you, if you want to talk sp- talk about the physics, um, you can talk to both. Just, I mean, I, I've, uh, you, several mechanics are intim- intimately familiar with the with the you know inner workings, including the combustion, including the combustion dynamics of of 
um, internal combustion engines and certainly can speak intelligently to them, just like many armors are certainly intelligent and can certainly speak to the the, the dynamics of the, the, uh, the, the stoner platform. But if you want to talk about the impact on the AR-15 of a 30% decrease or increase in reciprocation time, it would behoove you probably to speak with the weapon designer. And uh, if you do, and you quote that figure, let me know if they've noticed the same thing and what they think it uh, what the, they think the implications are, because I think it'd be useful. But that is something we can notice from the data right away. It's right there. It's been there. It's been there. Who's talking about it? Who takes my data and looks at it? Hopefully you do. I mean, this is all public. That's a pu- that's not from the member review. That's a public figure. It's been there the entire time. When was the Sega review published? It's been a while. Has anyone been keeping track? I mean, I do put in the disclaimer in the article saying, eh, careful with this data, but it's pre- it can be pretty good. Has anyone looked at that? You should. It's real. Reason 6,149 why the data's real. <laughs> Okay, we're just we're over an hour, so I'm gonna keep going now. Why am I telling you all of this? It's episode 100, so we're going a little free form here. But why am I telling you all of all of this information? And it's not just sound. Why am I? Because I, I, I want you to understand the silencers. I want you. I want to help you understand the performance of the silencers on the weapon system. I want. I want. I want to help you understand the Mark 18. And I and frankly, I, I want to show you. I want to show you that unequivocally, this data is consistent, meaningful, and correct. It's the best. It this is the best weapon system data you're ever gonna see, baby, in one place. I just I'm not saying I'm the only one who can do it. I'm saying it it <laughs> No one else is doing it, and I'm tooting my own horn toot toot. 100 episodes. Now, let's go back to the review. I'm going to scroll past the member stuff. You know, members, if you, ha- if, you, if you haven't read the member section with the ear stuff, uh, check it out. There's some research notes I think you should read. They're important, okay? So don't, don't, don't say I didn't remind you. Now, let me scroll. Let me get some water. All right, so everybody, everybody now for the whole class, let's go to si- section uh, 664.2. Let's scroll all the way down. Yeah, the suppression rating comparison, the pay dirt. This is pay dirt, right? Figure five. Important. That's right. Okay. This one caused quite the ruckus. A lot of people were upset, actually. People get very emotionally in- invested in the silencers. It's a sunk cost, um, I think. They get really upset. It's fine. It's, I'm, I'm not here to make you happy or sad. Um. It's not my problem. But I'm concerned with giving information to the public in a correct fashion. Okay, that's meaningful. Now, it is nuanced, though, this figure. Um, is the HXQD556K louder than the full size? Absolutely it is. Absolutely. No question. But it's quieter, it's quieter at the ear than everything else. <laughs> it is. Take it to the bank. It is. I'll, I'll take it to the bank, dude. I'll. I bet you it is. I, it's. It's on the chart. I promise. It's louder at the muzzle than everything but the razor. I'll take that to the bank too. <laughs> the the razor is not really that quiet. It's just not a quiet silencer. Um, on the Mark eighteen. It's just not, uh, it, and I hey I own a razor, personal. This is Jay talking, not Pew Science. This is I I, I bought Form Four, baby, Form Four. I own one. Not a bad silencer. It's great quality. Rugged is just it's great quality. It is it's just not quiet. Quiet is not an adjective you use when you describe a rugged razor, and anyone who does is their frame of reference is not large enough. And and that is not a um, you know what that's not true that's not fair to say because if they're comparing it to unsuppressed it's super quiet that's true that's right I can't I can't fault them if they say it's quiet well it's 
quieter. It's way quieter than unsuppressed. That's true. So, who am I to judge? The vernacular. Okay. So, so are these results controversial in in general? In holistically, this chart, this figure five. Suppression rating comparison in review 664. Are these results controversial? Oh, well, absolutely. They're absolutely controversial, and it's not just the so set this recent one. This is this is controversial, controversial for sure. And and, and there's reasons. There's reasons why these results uh, are seen as controversial to, to 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 the gun people on the internet. The first reason: um, the gun's not tuned. Okay, so so people immediately say, yeah, but the gun isn't tuned. If the gun was tuned, Sonser XYZ would totally spank it. Blah, blah, blah. It'd need to be so quiet. Uh, yeah, I know. I hear it all. I read it. I don't respond. Yeah, cool story. Cool story. Um, That's not the point of this test. And the data is what the data is. And for an untuned host, like most hosts are, this is showing a real phenomenon. So like it or not. You know, you bringing up a point that, yeah, but the gun's not tuned, just fair, fair point. But to insinuate that these te- these results are less than or somehow not, uh, uh, don't give meaningful conclusions, it's slippery slope. Be very careful because you're going to burn yourself. You, 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 you're putting your hand on the stove and you're not learning. You... you this is real, and when you tune a gun, you can change some things, but let's not get carried away, okay? The fact that this isn't even doing anything, it, it should alarm you, and 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 that's actually, this is a statement for everybody listening. I don't know if you're a consumer, a manufacturer, or or you're, or you're Bill Gates. I don't know who listens. I, I, I don't think he listens, probably not, but I, I don't know who listens, and I frankly, I don't care. I'm talking to all of you when I say... If you're a sensor manufacturer and you see this OSS performance and it doesn't concern you that it's possible and and if you didn't understand that it's possible, you should be concerned because if this is real, which I believe it to be, I have no reason to doubt the analysis. It's been consistent for the past few years. I've been doing it in the same standardized way. Um, you guys can do better because if OSS is doing what they're doing with this flow rate and all of these other silencers are not that much better, frankly, I'm disappointed. And I think that the state of practice has a long way to go. And uh, let's put our thinking caps on and do better. Okay, second reason this is controversial, and this is something I read every day, a lot of people say OSS sensors are very loud. Well, newsflash, they are loud. <laughs> they are. That's because they are. Huh, imagine that, the, uh, a consensus. Um, yeah, but, but they're just not as loud as people think compared to other silencers and that's and this chart is showing that and I think that's why this is controversial. I think it's because people are freaking out because they're realizing how loud this weapon system is and they're seeing these other quiet silencers not do as well as some of the others ones. And I mean yeah, the HXQD 556K it's not as quiet it's, or let me let me use a different phrase. Let me use a different group of words to describe loudness. The HXQD 556K induces a higher hearing damage risk to both the shooter and bystanders than the full size version of the silencer. Okay, but it induces a hearing damage risk at the shooter's ear that is on par or better than every other silencer on the table, on the graph, on the chart, in figure five of this review. The hearing damage risk to the shooter, the physical hearing damage risk to the shooter is on par or less than all of the other silencers shown in the weapon system in the table. So if that's controversial, then... 
that's because no one ever showed you real data. And that is unfortunately some that is across I bear because if anyone's going to yell at anybody, well, they're going to yell at me because I'm the only one saying this. Besides the people that oh, that own the OSS and they keep telling people, but no one believes them. But that's again not my problem. Now, finally, another reason why the results are controversial, or can be seen as controversial to the internet people, is because it shows. And this is I'm just I'm I'm somewhat iterating. I'm somewhat going to iterate on a point. The data shows that the five five the the HXQD five five six K is quieter than the Surefire RC2 with the Shooter Zero and the Mark 18. And when you put and when you use the RC2 with a War Comp, it, it's significantly it's a it's a suppression rating category better for your year than the RC2. I suppr- a 10 point delta in suppression rating. That's a category difference, my friends. Use the chart. Use the use the suppression rating chart, please. It's there for you. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I it's in every article. It's on every page of the website. In Figure Five, it says attention. Suppression ratings are absolute, and maybe use the with the rating dose chart. A five shot data for all tests shown. Like that, it it says it. It's right there. It, attention with exclamation points on the front and the back of the word attention in all caps in red. Use the chart, please. Now. Is it controversial? Because it, this shows that the 556K is quieter than the Surefire and in and to the shooter and uh, and quieter than the the, sure, the Surefire uh, to the shooter with the work comp by a mile. Is that controversial? Absolutely, it's controversial. People are freaking, they're losing their minds about it. I had a user reach out to me on Instagram direct message right to my account and if you think i don't see my dms i do i mean i'm a person with my phone you think this is like some corporation that's like uh in some kind of ivory tower and like i don't interact with people no dude you you dm me i see it so be careful what you send me because i chances are i'll read it like don't you know most uh, actually most people that that interact with me are extremely respectful it's very it's very rare that i have a problem in my dms it's funny how that works when you treat people with respect (laughs) weird right um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess some companies have problems with people in DMs. Weird. Hmm. I wonder why that would happen. I, I have no idea. Strange. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm being facetious. It's 100 episodes. I have a little bit of leeway here. Okay. Okay. Now, this guy reached out to me. He said, hey, why is my, and this is, and this is, I'm, I'm talking about this because I, I, I do consider all feedback and it's very important for me to understand why people's impressions are what they are. And I, I did have a genuine conversation with this gentleman. He, he said, he asked me, why is my RC2 with a war comp choir to me when I shoot it than the OSS on my gun? He asked me that. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's the, the gist of what he asked me. So he, he he told me he's used both these silencers and he uh, the Surefire with the War Comp and the and the HXQD 556K. Uh, I mean he didn't say that specifically, but he said this silent the OSS. I, I'm assuming he said that, but then he meant that. He asked me why why is the OSS louder to him as he, as the shooter. His gun is an 11 and a half inch gun. It's not a Mark 18. It's an 11 and a half inch gun. And I, I asked him how the gun was configured. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Well, how, how, how's your gun configured? I asked him. I told him, I told him uh, the OSS silencer and the Surefire, even with the War Comp, well, they have drastically different muzzle ratings. I mean, the Surefire is still a lot quieter at the muzzle by a lot, a lot. It's so, okay. And I told him the gun configuration matters a lot. So there's that. He didn't answer me. This gentleman did not answer me. He saw my he saw my responses because the Instagram thing it'll tell you if they've seen the message. He saw them. He read them. But he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't answer me. He didn't send any other follow up messages. So um, I don't know, uh, sir. Um, I really do appreciate you reaching out to me uh, privately. That's very nice of you. I appreciate the constructive feedback that I thought you might have provided, but you did not answer me. You did not ask. You did not tell me how your gun was configured. You did not um, uh, respond to me when I told you that the muzzle ratings are significantly different. You, 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 
you, I can only speculate as to what you were asking or saying and, and, and what you mean so, and your situation. I, can, I, I cannot read your mind. And I'm not probably not going to follow up with you because you saw my messages. If you want to respond, you can. I don't have time to follow up with every single person if they're not going to respond to me. Okay, I took the time to answer you. So, I mean, I'm not mad at you, but hey, I'm sitting here I'm running a company. So, um, and, I, and I want to make sure people have good data. <clears throat> I take this very seriously. And <clears throat> sorry about that. Oh, one second, guys. I'm going to pause this. Sorry, guys. Uh, frog, frog in my fl- in my throat. There. I, I was saying I I take this pretty seriously. So when, when a user uh, reaches out to me about about loudness, perceived loudness, um, experiences with different silencers, and they feel that uh, they have um, a personal experience um, that's a contradiction uh, with the test data, with the reported test data, or or at least they feel that there's a contradiction, which I, I take extremely seriously. I mean, the, the point of this is to um, it is to deliver consistent, meaningful data. So, you know, if there are issues with it, I, I need I need to investigate that, um, especially to make sure, that, you know, did I make an error? Is there a problem? Is there an oversight? Is there a disclaimer, disclaimer that needs to be offered? So, I mean, this is this is my way of, I mean, publicly speaking to thousands of people right now saying, hey, um, this gentleman, I don't know if he's listening or not. If anyone else has that feeling with all the stuff I've said about the 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 low frequency tendencies of the OSS to excite your ear in that range to sound boomy. The higher muzzle rating of stuff uh, versus the ear. The 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 inner ear analyses. The 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 untuned host. The ten point three inch barrel length. The H two buffer. The gas port size. All of the stuff is reported on PewScience.com so that you can compare apples to apples to apples to apples to make sure, okay? That, so that guy, I don't know. But it's controversial because, you know, there's opinions like that that people give. They don't elaborate, and they spread them. And then people say, well, the OSS is really loud. It's like, well, it might be. I mean, when you look at this chart, when you look at Figure 5, my data shows that the OSS... HXQD 556K is louder at the muzzle by a significant margin than all of the other silencers other than the Razor on this gun. But the but the waveform at the shooter's ear, and when I say shooter's ear, I mean the actual waveforms measure six inches right of my ear when I shot it. When I'm wearing ear plugs, I'm not wearing ear muffs. I'm wearing ear plugs every test. Okay, just so you understand the reflecting surface off of my head and the and the. the topography of my face <laughs> yes because that's what the waves are reflecting off of um, and wrapping around no it's important it makes a difference um so so that's what i see and what i do and i when i see it in the in figure five there um there's definitely a case to say that the silencer is louder than the surefire because it is overall but you put a war comp on that surefire on the mark on the same mark 18 the hearing damage risk to the shooter is significantly higher with the with the surefire with a war comp than the oss even the k version and you can take that to the bank i'll stand by that data i'll testify i'll testify in court to that data because i because i'm confident in it i mean I, I did this i'll i'm not lying to you why would i i don't care i don't own stock in these companies dude <laughs> come on man crazy so yeah Remember, all this being said, the suppression rating is a function of hearing risk, actual inner ear response, okay? Remember, Research Supplement 642, I talked about it earlier. If you're not a Pew Science member, you haven't seen it. OSS silencers have a boomy signature. Does that mean they're louder? Yeah, sometimes it does. Sometimes it does mean they're louder. But what it really means is there's a large portion of their signature that's exercising your inner ear in the low frequency range. This means that perception might be very clear of the sound. But is it hurting your ears as much? Uh, the suppression rating cares about that. Okay, again, this is this is one of the hundred reasons why the so-called Pepsi challenge is a terrible idea, dude. Psychoacoustics. Google it. You can Google psychoacoustics on your own time. The suppression rating is a tie, it's tied to inner ear anatomy and dose limit, guys. It's not... This isn't super happy fun time. Okay, this is, this is not... Let's 
turn our backs and have fun time. No, this is in your response. It's, it's objective. It's, it's done the same way every time. I'm not changing how I do it. Okay. So our other silencer is going to sound different than this silencer, than this OSS HXQD556. Absolutely they are. Is the OSS HXQD556K a loud silencer? Absolutely it is. Do many other silencers induce just as much, if not more, hearing damage risk to the shooter on the Mark 18 as this silencer? 100% they do. So keep that in mind. That's what figure five is showing you. Don't forget it. Okay, questions about Do you have questions about it? Tech at PewScience.com. I've, I've talked to him blue in the face about this. But it's fine. If you have questions, email me. I'll, I'll talk to you. So that's the long and short of it, really. To bystanders... See, things louder than a lot of stuff on the Mark 18. It's quieter than the Razor. At the ear, it's hanging with stuff. It's meeting or exceeding the level of protection of the shooter's ear, the trash bandit, the RCT, the, five, the R556 from KGM. It's, is the silencer relevant? Absolutely. Is it the highest performer? No. Is it working? You bet your butt it's working. The data shows it. The user experiences show it. We have enough data now that we can see why. Okay, and all in all, and I'll be honest with you, and I, I can say this because this is, this is my podcast and I, I, I give opinion on this podcast. Not, it's not like the articles on the website. Okay, this is opinion I give. I, I, I color commentary. I'm actually kind of growing to like the HXQD series myself personally. You don't have to adjust your guns. If you're wearing here, protection anyway, it changes, changes the absolute importance of the signature, signature to you, the shooter. The signature suppression is still respectable. Not adjusting your gun means that this is actually not fouling your gun as much either. And that's real. That's real. When you shoot it suppressed, that, that's, a, that's a blessing. You, you, if you're a gun guy, you know. You know this. And this, is not, this is not controversial to say. If you have a gun that doesn't like silencers, the OSS can help with that. It can. Uh, particularly some weird communist guns like the AK, AK stuff. Okay, I, could be useful to you. <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, no. If, if you don't want to mess with the gun and you and you want a silencer that works reasonably well with supersonic rifle rounds, the OSS might be for you. I mean, like, would I use it on a bolt gun? Uh, if it's all I had, yeah. If it's all I had, of course I would. But if your goal is better suppression, there are, there are bolt gun silencers. I think that'll do a fantastic job. I think I think the OSS silencers will work. Like like you've seen the test data for that on pscience.com. You've seen the articles on that, but you know, you've seen 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 the the analysis. I, I just wouldn't count on the the OSS to suppress like some of the really advanced silencers meant for super duper quiet time. Okay, that's it's not really what they're for. Different mechanisms, different intent, different sport, different sport, different different type of silencer. I mean, for me personally, I think the OSS silencers are supersonic semi-auto silencers. That's, for me personally, That's uh, they'll work on other stuff, but they're best utilized for, for the supersonic semi-auto or full auto. Okay, I think that's where the data, I think that's what the data shows. I think that's reasonable, that's a reasonable take. That's what I think. Now, um, I wish I had the silencer in front of me. I had to give it back. Um, I like the size of it. It's compact. It's shorter than the RC2 even. Um, you know, the full-size one's not too long. I think you get... You do get um, enough suppression benefit from using the full-size, I think, to make that worth it if you are if you are concerned with signature. Um, if you're concerned with weight and length, maybe you do go with the K if you're looking at these two silencers. Um... I don't know. I think the the full size works so well. I if I, I don't know. Like I I kind of want one honestly, and so that's kind of like kind of talking about. I kind of want a full size one for myself. Um, yeah, I think they're cool. I think I think um, one thing I talked about before. I don't think I mentioned it this episode yet, but I, I like that they have left handed mounts. You um you know you screw the mount on the gun as typical, and you tighten the silencer left hand tightening so like if you ever got the mount stuck in it is a taper mount you know if you got the mount stuck on it or you whatever you could 
you could put it on the barrel and then you could tighten it all the way on the barrel then you have you continue to tighten it as the mount bottoms out there on the barrel well then you go you keep turning the silencer clockwise and it unscrews from its mount you see i always find that to be a cool feature um it, you don't need that feature when you properly torque a muzzle device to the barrel but it's cool and i think it's kind of just one of those little things and i also like again i don't have it in front of me but i also like how the muzzle device sits flush inside the silencer if i can remember correctly it doesn't protrude at all so that's kind of cool um what else i'm just trying to think of the physical features i usually have a silencer in front of me when i speak about it um so i can tell you about like the physical characteristics but um, oh yeah this one has a flash hider feature on the front like the the 556 OSS silencers have that. I think they're going to add that to the 762. Now the flash, one thing about flash that kind of sucks when you have high flow rate is the flash can be high because high flow rate oftentimes means there is a lot of combustion products coming out of the silencer and a lot of a lot of gas and uh, it can ignite the um, unburnt powder and also uh, the oxygen in the flow stream can uh, intermix really quickly and support extra combustion. And you get flash out of silencer, and it's a big fireball. It's real bad. Um, you know, some high flow rate silencers that do that, for example, are Dead Air Sam NK. That is a very, very flashy silencer. Very high flow rate silencer. Very conventional silencer. Conventional baffles. The OSS silencer is a little different. Um, the flash header features on the, on the end, reportedly, they help that a little bit. I have not tested that at night. I do not know. Um, maybe you can ask somebody uh, if they have any pictures of that. It could help you. If, if flash matters to you, in all likelihood it doesn't, but it might. You never know. So, yeah. What else? Um, I'm, just going off the, I'm going from memory. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, they, they come in, uh, at least the full-size ones. I don't know if the small one does, but the, the, the full-size ones come in titanium and steel. Um, you know, really physically, when you really think about it, the steel ones should be quieter, theoretically. Um, you won't, you probably won't notice it, but I bet you, I think I've measured it. I think, I bet you the steel ones are a little bit quieter. You can't tell when you shoot them, but I bet you they are. And that's probably due to heat transfer. Um, when you really, if you really want to break this, if you really want to see how, how this all works, um, yeah, the steel ones for the, for, for an OSS, I'm not talking about in general for all silencers. I'm talking about the OSS specifically, specifically physics would dictate that. Uh, the steel one probably will be quieter, but um, I think um, I think that the finish is really nice. Those black, the black. Um, I remember it. I remember liking it. I was like, wow, that's cool. And um, theoretically, they should cool down faster. Would do the high flow rate. I mean, theoretically, it just depends on the firing schedule probably and how long heat soak takes place. But but yeah, so those are some like little little tidbits about the silencers um what else that's about it i have to say um the i'm i'm overall i mean this might be eh, i was gonna say it might be one of the last times i talked about oss but i have other oss silencers i've tested too <laughs> on the mark 18 so you you'll get to see me even more i just think it's interesting i kept I, I got all of them at once just to test them all and i had to give them back but but i but before i gave them back i tested them so i'd have the data and um they're interesting so yeah i think we'll talk about them more and uh yeah they're 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 just they're just so different they're so different than everything else that it's really interesting to see how they stack up so i would like to thank oss or huxworks it's now i guess a subsidiary of oss i think that's how they're working that um so i'd like to thank oss for that they they actually they're they're a corporate member of puissance they, they're supporting it and uh you know i and before they did that i actually went up there um to utah there and i met them they welcomed me into their facility we they they let me do some testing with them. I actually did some testing with OSS in in house in their in, in in their lab. Uh, it was cool. It was cool, and um, they're really open minded. That was a really cool part um, to speaking with them. Uh, some of those folks uh, specifically were really open minded, and I and I I found that refreshing. And when you think about what they've done with the HXQD series. You know, you, you got to know that it takes some outside the box thinking to make something like this happen. I respect that. I do. Yeah, that's, man, if you, if you asked me two years ago if I would be saying those words right now. <laughs> that is so wild. 100 episodes and I the 100th one, I'm talking about an OSS silencer doing something good. 
Up is down, down is up. Cats and dogs living together on one roof. One termination. Topic two at a time of one hour and 29 minutes and 38 seconds. Ah, see? Basically still spent a full hour on that OSS topic after that almost half an hour intro. Okay, we got to burn through this. This is getting out of hand. Topic two, stack data publications coming. Yeah, might publish some member research. I don't know. I might be over-promising and under-delivering. You know, it gave me an idea, though, talking about this OSS thing. I was thinking about it. As I prepared for the podcast and I talked through it just now with you, I was thinking about it. I think I'm going to do another member's research supplement, this time for the Mark 18. I don't know if I, I don't know that I've done that yet. It's overdue. I'm overdue. Been busy. The holidays and everything, catching up. I had contract work, a lot of stuff. Now, maybe I'd, maybe I'd do that this week if I have time. I don't know if I'll have time or the energy. I might. But I bet I could bang one out, as they say. Just for members. This won't be public. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So yeah, so this is a short topic. That's not really all I had to say. I just I wanted to tell you I was thinking about it and that it will come, if not now, a little bit later, but I will do it. I think it's important to do it. I think that I actually want to take a closer look at some of the Mark 18 signatures, and this might be an excellent way to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it for a tool of my own understanding and publish it for members too. Okay, and you guys support me. I support you with extra knowledge. That's what I do. Yeah, it's a win-win. Pew Science. Okay, topic three at a time of one hour, 31 minutes, and 24 seconds. This is going to be, this is going to get me in trouble. Who cares about silencer diameter anyway, really? Also, (laughs) welcome to the new Pew Science members. Thank you for your support. I'm going to post a photo with this podcast today that is super wild. It's going to have some R&D stuff in it. It's going to have some existing stuff, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Uh, green. <laughs> the main thing is the diameter, uh, one and a half inch diameter stuff. Uh, why do we have that as a diameter? One and a half inches, 1.5 inches, common dimension. I think bigger than an inch, bigger than one and one eighth inch. Bigger than one and three eighth inches. Seems reasonable. One and a half inches, 1.5. The question is, what can you do with 1.5 inches of diameter that has not already been done? Do you always have to go to a larger diameter to do certain things? Or can you go smaller than 1.75 inches in diameter? To do certain things. Can you stay at 1.5 inches in diameter. Do certain things. Can, if you go a little bigger. If you go a little smaller than 1.5 inches. Why 1.5? The silencer in the photo is an example of some studies. And what may result from certain studies. Um, it's also not the only manufacturer that's doing things like this. Please look at the photo. I'm not even going to name it right now. <laughs> Just look at it. As Pew Science continues and more testing and R&D is performed, I think we're going to continue to learn a lot. We are. And pushing the silencer silencer industry forward one test at a time. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all the new members. Your support means the world. And we're glad to have you. Here's to the 100th episode, and here's to 100 more. Pew Science. Stay safe, and I will talk with you folks again soon. Bye.